reason we came to Urfa was to visit Gobleki Tempe. So here we are. This temple dates back to 12,000 years ago and it's the oldest temple ever discovered so far. 12,000 years. Just to give you a perspective, the pyramids are around 4,500 years old and the Stone Age 6,000 years old. This is double its age. It's double Stone Age's age. And just <laughs> to come here, you can take a mini bus like we did. It's very easy. It costed us five lira per person. We're gonna leave all the information on the description down below on how to get here, so you won't get lost. <laughs> Very easy, as we said. It is very easy. Right, let's check this temple out. discovered in 1963 but at the time they didn't give it much attention and in 94 when a German archaeologist came that's when they realized the importance and the magnitude of this place and you can see it's very small because it's been excavated until today Whoa, that's a spell nobody touched it there's actually nobody here yeah so but there's some rocks just fell down here Yeah, this place is still being excavated and there's a lot of excavations we can see around here. There's still some material that they left there. Oh yeah, they're, they're working. Yeah, and just behind us they have this place covered and they are excavating and there's no information about it, but it's obviously part of the main site here. They believe that this is the birthplace of religion, 12,000 years. So that long ago, people already believed in something greater. People already had their beliefs. And it's unbelievable to see that even this was, they built this even before writing was invented and they carved animals on the rocks. Yeah, you can see all of this was done by manpower. These big T-shaped stones, uh, structures, weigh about four tons. I think it's around four tons. How many people to carry one? Or how do they carry one? They had some sort of uh, something, you know, to, to be it able had to, to do be a, this. It had to be a lot, a lot of people. So you can see everything was built in circles. So this is one, over there is another one, and over there it's another one. Yeah, so there's a few of them. You can see one here, so there's at least another four one, here. and another one there. And I just believe they did some rituals also here. This place was more like a cult, I would say, where they believe, this is just a theory, there's many theories about this place, but one of the theories is that they placed the dead here and they, they carved the animals or whatever images they carved on the rocks to protect the dead. And this place was very special for them. And there was even, they believe, pilgrims just come in here for like 1,000, for 150 kilometers from here, they would come here and, you know, perform whatever cults and rituals they believed. But nobody really knows exactly because yeah. it's so old they have no idea. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of theories going on and they can only suppose. <laughs> and we can only suppose that we don't know anything about anything of this mm. world really because every, every year there's something new being discovered. And so this was during the Neolithic time and people believe that they humans were hunter-gatherers so they wouldn't perform this kind of rituals, rituals yeah. and they didn't believe they they didn't have the energy or the power or the thoughts to put into something like this mm -hmm. like a cult or anything or a religious site but this just comes to prove that they, they were, were wrong because uh, the hunters had time and the energy to build something else rather than just hunting look at this So basically people thought that the Neolithic men were cavemen. Mm. This proves to be totally the opposite. Farming at that time was not invented. They didn't know how to plant a seed and let it grow. Mm -hmm. But they were already making these huge structures. Maybe we think that they didn't know, but maybe they already yeah. had farming. <laughs> who knows? Maybe they already had the writing invented, who knows? We know nothing. Can you believe and that far? 
And you really wanted to come here? I really wanted to come here for a really long time. As soon as we came to Turkey and I was like, we're searching sites to go. This was like the first one I wanted to go. I was like, ah, oh, I want to go there. And I had no idea this place existed. I only, we only hear normally about the Stonehenge, the pyramids, and we actually have something, obviously it's not similar, but it comes from the same Neolithic time in our region where we're from in Portugal. And it's actually on the bus station mm -hmm. where we got there's an image of uh, the place that I'm talking about. We're gonna leave it here. We can put it right here, so yeah. you can see. And it dates to not the same time, but the Neolithic Very old. times, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see, but there's an uh, animal carved on that T-shaped structure. I mean, it looks like a wolf or a dog or something. And it was, they did it, they carved everything only using stone tools. So imagine all the work they did. You know what? By that time, not even the wheel was invented. Yeah, exactly, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. How did they carry all of this? Because, you know, the wheel played a big a big play when they were like constructing things and, and using the, the wheel like to pull the weights and distributing the weights in different ways but at this time they had nothing or maybe they did and we don't know about it here we can have a better understanding in how this was built you can see everything was built in circles and these two are still buried they believe yeah because there's these lines around here which we and we can't see them so we think they're buried the biggest one is number c which is this one here you can definitely see it, round shape right here, and that is D, which is a big one too, and that is B and A. And who knows what's buried in these grounds, so this, around here? Yeah, this area is beautiful and also big. This should be a farmland. I think that's how they discovered this. I read, yeah, I read somewhere that a farmer was working on his lands and he hit a rock. But not just one normal rock, it was probably something that he never seen before. He knew it was something big. So he called the archaeological department and they came and they discovered this. As you said, they didn't pay much attention. No. As in Turkey, there's so much of... Um, historical sites buried so they, they, they didn't really know what this place was and like we said before they didn't pay much attention but then in 94 when the German archaeologists came boom, they knew they knew they knew this was big and it's funny because this place sits on the highest hill of this hill range and it's underground it's buried and I read online as well that the guys that did this the Neolithic guys buried this before they they left the because they didn't leave here this was just a place of worship for them mm -hmm. they were probably settled around this area and before they probably left they buried this mm -hmm. they used to make rituals some maybe some sacrifices mm -hmm. to but the gods we're obviously not sure of this is true information or not because there's so much online and most of it is theories and you know who knows what's going on here really. Just in time. Just in time. <laughs> and this was the last bus coming to Urfa. So we are back in Urfa and we were walking, about to go home. So I saw this place selling this and I've been wanting to try this for a very long time. So here we are today. This is called Kofte? Kunefe. Kunefe. Kofte is a meatball. That's the meatball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this... We should have eaten this after dinner, not before. Oh, look at the cheese melting. You like it? I love it. 
Do you? This is so good. I thought it was going to be strange because the sweet, I mean the cheese is sweet. But this is so good. For me, it doesn't look, look that appealing, you know? Sweet cheese with a pastry. And this is served hot. Very hot. So this is basically cheese, melted cheese with syrup and there's some pastry on top that I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's the same pastry as they used to make the baklava. Look at this. And it's dipped in syrup. So it's gonna be very sweet. Syrup, it's gonna be very sweet. So sweet cheese. Sweet. It's so good. This was ten lira. Ten lira. I'm gonna have this every day. <laughs> And I love cheese, so I thought it was going to be a weird combination, but actually it's very good. I'm surprised. You try it. I honestly think I'm not going to be a fan of this. But I'm going to cut this... In half? In half. You can just... Okay. Here we go. Alright, here we go. Surprise, surprise. You like it? I like it. <laughs> it's very good, right? I would never imagine that I would like sweet cheese on a pastry. But it's surprisingly good. I'm so happy. I don't know why we didn't try this before. <laughs> Last bite. Finish. You know what? Now I fancy something sweet. Let's see what they've got. They also sell uh, Let's see what do they have. What is this? Sarma. Sarma. Uh, Sarma. Sarma. Pistachio? Pistachio. Okay. Pistachio. Pistachio. Okay. Uh, I'll have one, please. Now Thank you. Some it's pistachio. Very green. It's green. Thank you. This is called sarma. 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 It's green. It's healthy, right? <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> you can okay. try. You can try. No, you try first. This was your idea. You chose this one. So he said it was pistachio pastry. Oh, soft. I thought it was going to be hard. Mmm, interesting. Mm. Has a lot of pistachio. Has like a very strong taste of pistachio, which I love. This and is, is it sweet as the... It's very sweet. This is basically pistachios... And sugar. ...crushed, I think, with pastry and syrup also, dipped in syrup. So it's like juicy and got a very strong flavor of pistachio. Mm. Mm. In Turkey, they really know how to satisfy the sweet teeth of people. I really love this. Good. That is very soft. And there's a, a lot of pistachio. Oh, it smells good. It smells nutty. Mm. Mm. It's not too sweet, you no. know? It's not overpowering sweet. You can taste a lot of the pistachio and I don't know what else. I think they were not showing the pistachio here because it has a very strong flavor. Mm. It's really good. So this is the place, Hashibaba, since 1942. Very old. Thank you. Let's take a look. Pay over there. Okay. Okay. Take a Tomorrow we come again. Thank you. Tomorrow again. That was lovely. That was.
was very good and very unexpected because this was not planned. We were supposed to go home and find a place to grab some food and we were like, oh, let's see something sweet. We stopped here, we tried some sweets. It's we, never we, never do, we never do any research of food, like places to, to eat. We just look around, see? This was, we hit the jackpot here. Hachibaba. Highly rec Hachibaba. Highly recommend this place. Hachibaba. This is what Krishna had. And I had this. Tomorrow I'm going to try this one. This oh, it's very good too. Mm. Wow. What? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Nearly bumped into that old man. Okay. Right, let's find something to eat now. Biro. Biro. Yes, yes. This beef or lamb? Then? This is this is moo or bad? This one. Which of the other book? I don't know. Mm. It's okay. Good. I think it's beef. Beef. Have it head? Head? Head. Head. Ah. Okay, not beef. It's lamb. It's lamb. It's lamb. Good. Oh, well, now we can add our salad. We can put tomato. I know. Uh, I mean, salad and galia. Yeah. Okay. We have tomato. Very salty. Mm. onion. This one, spice? Okay. Okay, okay. Mm. Iron? Iron. Iron. Yes. Thank you. All right, we already got our dinner sorted. I'm gonna have kofte. Christian's gonna have a pide. Cheese pide, I admit. I, I know in Istanbul I was having it every day, but since we left Istanbul, <laughs> today's gonna be the first time I'm gonna have cheese pide. So it's been a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. And we shall see you on the next one. Peace.